So what have we done so far? Uh, we are still trying to do text classification and the applications are something like uh, sentiment analysis. We have started with recursive deep, deep models. For those types of models, you needed to have a parsed tree. So there is some pre-processing that you needed to do on your data. But once you have that, the rest of it, the model that you write is going to be dependent on the tree structure. And then you keep uh, merging words and nodes of the tree together until you end up with one vector in the end that you can use for classification purposes. Then we said, perhaps, if we treat sentences the same way that we treated images, where each word could be thought of as a pixel, then we can use convolutional neural networks to deal with that. And then we saw two versions of it. The first version is using uh, word vectors, and the other one is using uh, one-hot encoding for the words. So we saw two different versions of using convolutional neural networks. So these two models, recursive models and uh, convolutional neural networks, they are nonlinear models. This one is linear, the one that you try to represent your sentences as, and documents by paragraph vectors. So not only you have word vectors, you're going to have paragraph vectors. This is linear, but then it's heavily parameterized. And we know that we can approximate complicated functions if we look at them locally. And this is exactly what you're doing. So locally around each one of your data points, each one of your paragraphs, you have a vector representation. So this is going to end up being a very powerful model, but the drawback is that you need to do some optimization during infer inference. So that's one drawback. Today, we are going to learn about recurrent neural networks, LSTM, uh, and uh, GRUs, gated recurrent units. But before we do that, there is this strong benchmark that is surprisingly strong that I want to go through first. And that's the, the idea of this paper is very simple. So you have and the model is going to be called fast text. This is the model architecture. You have n-gram features. So think of n-grams as words in your document. So these could be words, or it, they could be pairs of words. So these are your n-grams. And each one is going to be a sentence, because we want to take as input a sentence and output a vector. What is the idea here? The idea is that you take these uh, n-gram features, which could be in terms of one-hot encoding, or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, however that you want to think about them, it's okay. The idea is that you're going to take that and project it into a hidden space. And by projection, I mean matrix vector multiplication. So in deep learning, whenever I say projection, or whenever you hear projection, that's just vector matrix multiplication. So this is a vector, and then you're multiplying it by a matrix. And because these are one hot encoded, you're just picking out one of the columns or one of the rows of that matrix. So you do that, you multiply by a matrix, or you just read off the, let's say W1 is 1000, and you have a matrix. So you're going to read the 1000th uh, row of that matrix, and you're going to put it here. And you do it for every single word or every single n-gram in that sentence. Once you are here at the hidden layer, you just add them up. So it's just a summation. Once you sum them up, you're going to end up with a single vector that you can use for your classification. Now you turned your sentence into a single vector. And once you do that, it's game over. The rest of it is classical machine learning, logistic regression. Okay, The entire framework you can write it in a single formula. This xn is your nth document. So it's your nth data point. It's your nth review on an Amazon product. Because things are linear, you could do your summation either at the hidden layer. So you can first do your projections and then do your summation there. Or you can do your summation here at this level, end of it xn, and then multiply by a. So it's equivalent. You can multiply A by W1, go there, A by W2, go up there, A by WM minus one, 
go in the hidden layer and add them up, or you can do your summation here and then multiply by A once. So it's equivalent. Once you're here, this is AXN in the hidden, it's just one vector. You multiply it by another matrix to take you to the correct dimension of your classes. Let's say you have five classes. Let's say you are predicting five classes. So this is gonna correct the dimension for you. You do a softmax to turn those numbers into probabilities. And then you want to maximize the probability of the correct class. This YN is gonna choose the correct class because these are one hot vectors. So whenever you multiply a one hot vector by another vector, it's gonna pick out the corresponding element in that probability distribution. So you want to maximize this or equivalently, you can try to minimize the negative of the log of your probability. So that's your last function. And this is the entire model. A and B are the parameters of your model that you're optimizing over. So you are minimizing this last function with respect to A and B. So A takes you from your n grams to the hidden layer. And then you go from hidden layer to the output layer by B. N is the size of your entire corpus. That's the entire data set, total number of documents. Xn is just the way that you featureized your document N. This could be a bunch of N grams, like what I just explained. Or when you add them up, basically you're counting the number of times that a particular word is appearing in your document. That's another way to think about it because these are one hot encoded. Once you, once you add them up, if a word is appearing twice in a sentence, that's gonna give you a two in the corresponding entry of that vector after the summation. And that's gonna give you a bag of features or you can try to normalize it. What do I mean? Some of the words are very frequent in your corpus. So you want to downweight those types of words. That's what normalization is gonna do for us. So for this Xn, think something like TFIDF, term frequency inverse document frequency. So term frequency is just the number of times that a word is appearing in your sentence. So that's the term frequency. And then you are dividing that because you want to normalize by how frequent that word is. So you're gonna count the number of times that that particular word is appearing in your documents. So that's how you, so it's not a complicated topic, TFIDF, it's just uh, trying to take care of the frequency of the words. So, and you want to downweight uh, the words that are really frequent in your corpus, like of, like for, these are frequent words. That's your XN. Once you have XN, you're gonna multiply it by A. Y is gonna be your label which you encoded in terms of one hot vectors, you have these weight matrices. You can think of A as a lookup table. That's another way to think about it. So these are all equivalent interpretations of the same concept because this model is linear. If W1 has only a non-zero entry at a particular row or column, once you multiply it by a matrix A, it's gonna pick that corresponding row or column of this matrix. So that's why you can think of it as a lookup table. F is a softmax, it's gonna turn a bunch of numbers into probabilities. And if you think about it, this model is very similar to continuous bag of words. And we know that the computational cost for this softmax is gonna depend on K, the number of classes, and it's gonna depend on, on the dimension of the text representation because you are doing a dot product and the dot product is gonna do a summation over H. So there's gonna be a for loop of size H and the number of output classes matter because that's what you're gonna use to normalize your softmax because you want your softmax to, whatever that comes out of softmax, you want it to add up to one. You want it to be a probability distribution. So there's gonna be a for loop on number of classes. We saw this before and it can reduce the cost by hierarchical softmax. Rather than being order of log two or order of k, you can turn it to be order of log two k. So the model is very simple, and it is in terms of performance on multiple sentiment analysis data sets. It is on par with uh, nonlinear models, like such as CNNs or recurrent run networks.
or CNN the game. So, and as I said, you can only include words and that's gonna give you the baseline fast text or you can include bigrams as well for your features to featureize your document. See, these numbers are very good. They are on par with the previous state of the art comparable to nonlinear models. And what is cool about this is that a CNN is going to take one hour, two hours, eight hours, two days. This is their small model to train on different data sets, or it's going to take three hours, five hours, one day, five days to train on these data sets. You can make that better. So I'm not going to go through the details of that paper, but that's a nonlinear. That one is also based on CNNs. That's a nonlinear model. This is a little bit faster, for instance, two hours, 45 minutes, or seven hours, depending on the depth of your neural network. But this simple model is giving you similar performance and it's training in one second up until 10 seconds. So it's, a, uh, it's an impressive model. It's super fast and it's very hard to beat. So it's a powerful model. Not only that, but because of this hierarchical softmax, you can uh, you can scale this model to large output space where you have large number of classes where your K is large or where you have large corpus. And this is a data set. These are uh, tags on images, but then you remove the images. And then from the title and the description of the image, you are predicting the tag. And you can have a lot of tags. And this is how it is comparing to the previous state of the art. This is a nonlinear model. And as you can see, this is training for three hours. These are the running times or five hours. And this one is in the, in the order of minutes and seconds. So for text classification, if you come up with a model, then uh, you need to compare it to powerful benchmarks, powerful state of the art. This is one of the state of the art that you need to compare to. So at least if your model is taking one day or two days to train, then it should give you better numbers than this. So does this make sense? Any questions about this before I move to the next topic?